Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, and alongside Jonathan Goodman from Franklin Square, New York, we welcome you to this time of prayer and music, kind of in the middle of winter now. So I did notice today when I woke up, a little bit lighter outside in the morning, so the light is coming more and more in the outside, and we pray that this time together brings light to you, the light that comes from Christ into your hearts. And so we begin with a time of centering and prayer. Our theme tonight is trusting in God, which can be difficult at times, especially in the times we've been living in of late. So as we center in this, this theme of trust, let's go ahead and close our eyes. Breathe out anything that would distract us from hearing the message God has for us today. And as you breathe in, let that be the Holy Spirit. Loving God, we thank you for this time to stop. Stop whatever we're doing and to come into worship with you and with one another. Lord, our lives are so busy with things that we fill them up with. Work, school, errands, running around, making sure everything's prepared, making sure everything's clean. But sometimes we just move through our days so fast we barely have time to stop and recognize you in our lives. And then, Lord, when it comes to the difficult times in our lives or the lives where there seems to be more than one path to take, we really need you then as much as we do every other minute of the day. Lord, help us to place our trust even more in you. Help us to live our lives recognizing you even in those ordinary times. Lord, help us to give our thanks more readily and to share our gifts even more often with those in need. Lord, bless us this time and guide us and lead us on the way you would have us go. In Jesus' name we pray. And actually, I want to thank Jonathan for spending time with me in preparing the service uh, for this evening. And I came with some suggestions of hymns, and Jonathan came and changed all of them. And he was led in our hymnal to, to offer some pieces that were on his heart with this theme of trust. And the first one is called Sweet Hour of Prayer. Join along at home. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In Hasten to the place where God my 
continue in this service the music the message the words that we hear and the silence we experience all forms of prayer in this sweet time together with God and with one another I know there are so many prayers not only in our own specific church family but in our communities our nation our world and even for ourselves remember that God wants us to love ourselves as well, not just God, not just others, but to love ourselves. And we need to share what's on our hearts with God and maybe even with one another. So let's deepen in this time together. God, we thank you for this day, for this day of sunshine outside at the moment and for this brief period of warmth outside we give you thanks and praise we know that after this recording that the weather will turn and that's kind of like how it is in our life times of glory times of pure unabated joy that's even happy and then there's times when those storms do come lord whether we're just washing dishes whether we're driving to do those errands, even those ordinary times, we know that you are with us, whether we recognize it or not. We give you thanks and praise. Lord, for those times when we're jumping out of our seats to shout thanksgivings and blessings abounding, and we thank you that you're with us. And for all that you have done to help our life and our experience get to that point. And Lord, when we're low and things are going wrong in the way that we see them, when things are very, very hard, when we're in loss, when we lose someone that we love, Lord, those times are very difficult. And they can be very hard on us and we may not react to them very well and we may not even call on you for help lord help us to do even better help us in as many times of our lives as we can to put you and keep you at the center to notice you everywhere we go in every season every day every hour lord in this hour as we are stopped ready to listen change our hearts in some way lord we invite you in help us to put you even more first and foremost and to trust not only what you have for us, but how 
you will carry us through it. Lord, help us on the other side of events or times in our lives to be able to reflect that, to learn and to grow. Lord, for so many in our own church family here, we have many families that are grieving at once. So much loss in the last week. We lift up the Mead and Salvia families. We lift up the Sloan family. We lift up the Hawkins Scott family. We lift up the Bazone family, all mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, we pray for families like Jonathan's as they are sending their college students back off to school and now missing them once again. We pray for our teachers and educators as they are, are teaching right now under difficult conditions, to say the least. We pray for our hospitals and the people who work in facilities to care for others with so many that are sick with a variety of illnesses. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for those that are experiencing doubt, or for those that are going through really hard times right now, that they can put their trust in you, find strength and comfort in you, and walk with you through those times. And Lord, for those that have just been married or just given birth to a beautiful young baby or experiencing all different kinds of times of celebration, graduations, promotions, new jobs, Lord, we pray that that time of celebration is in thanksgiving to you. Lord, bless us and keep us in this time and thankful for the greatest gift that we could ever receive, your love that comes to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, came to earth to teach, to pray, to sacrifice, and to show us all about what love really means. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this evening is called, Fairest Lord Jesus. Join me. And I'm going to sing the first, second, and third verses. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, all power of God and man the Son, Jesus is 
our Savior, our friend. Listen to these words from the book of Proverbs, chapters 3, verses 5 and 6. And although these words were written long time before Jesus was born and lived as a fully human on earth, think of them as God in Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and how the word Lord is meant for all of who God is and who we put our trust in. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, Jonathan, I was thinking about that word trust, and here we are, about two years into this time we've been living in. And when you came into the building today, you had your mask, and you were ready to put it on, and we've talked, and we've been around each other at times, and, you know, we've taken the steps that we feel we need to take, that we can be with one another, and sing with one another and share and, and feel safe around one another. But boy, oh boy, do I miss the days when you could just greet people like you used to or, or be with them and not have to go through all of those thought processes to just encounter people on the street and not worry about this kind of living. Feels like it puts a barrier in life that really I would wish wasn't there. And it, you know, after two years, when is this going to stop? You know, when we talk about trust, boy, we've had to put our trust in God through science, through learning, through experiencing, and even kind of trusting God within ourselves to make some decisions on, on how to live, even now. I don't know what you're experiences in this time have been, especially in teaching in a school like you do at two different colleges and some of the changes you've had to make and, and how that might have affected you in your life. Well, the experience is unique for a voice teacher, you can imagine, because of the rules governing a student um, having to wear the mask while singing. Mm -hmm. And so there's constant uh, talk about how do we handle uh, the singing voice, which can bring aerosols into the air at a much larger rate than just talking. And so there are singer masks, and we've made them available to students, but uh, um, perhaps those singer masks are not as uh, guarding against um, aerosols as uh, N95s or, or more uh, you know, medical masks. And, um, but it's the soul and the spirit of singing that also gets muffled with mm. a piece of fabric in front of your face. Mm. And so um, I've tried to use it as a challenge to have my students express through the eyes more, to um, sort of come out beyond the cloth and to uh, project more, and so we can always focus on those things. Mm. They find that when they are allowed to sing without a mask on stage, in certain circumstances, um, that uh, they've got more to present because they've had to deal with a limitation. Mm. Wow. So going through some of this adversity has actually been a help in discipline in a way and to come at things differently through voice, through projection, through the way that they sing so that when they do sing in the way that they used to, it might even be stronger in a way. That's the hope. We, we all hope for that and that's the goal that I've tried to, uh, to put forth. Um, and it is hard to believe when you say two years, I had to think, and it is true, we were shut down at Adelphi University in, in uh, mid-March Right. And uh, so we're coming up on the second year. But uh, yeah, I try to turn that into a positive if I can. If you can. And so I love that metaphor of 
students who want to sing and in the church we're, we're singing to the lord we're singing with other people with glory to god and having to do that mass even in the church i'm thinking about these students who are, are trying to learn the craft of, of singing out and feeling muffled and how sometimes in our lives the experiences around us may start to wear us down and how like your singers we might start to feel muffled inside and feeling muffled inside or masked inside might start to make us feel masked and muffled in how we project out to the world and are we allowing the world to influence us too much are we allowing circumstances to weigh us down so much that we're not even looking to the source and connecting to the source of what and more importantly who can help us i thought about this as we've been preparing this service and even before jonathan arrived today at some of those very very difficult times in my life very hard some of them i prayed outright and connected well with god some of them i got really angry stomped around uh, and did not connect very well didn't really even want to try to ride through difficult times on my own or thought that there was so much stress but i still could handle it and that i would just ride through that time and what i notice on reflection whenever i and i'm using that word i a lot right now try to handle things without turning to god it doesn't go as well as it could I might get through it by the grace of someone helping me even when I didn't ask. Mm. But when I turn and put my trust in God, I find that things just seem to ride smoother. That doesn't mean that everything works out great. But it means that as I go through the bumps, I don't feel like I'm alone. I feel like somebody's really feel like somebody's with me and somebody's going to see me through to the other side i don't know if you've ever had an experience like that at any time in your life yes yeah. dealing with loss uh, the pain of a, a father who passed away when i was fairly young and then uh, one year later my girlfriend who became my wife uh, she had the same loss of, of her father one year later and uh, riding through it together with uh, another person here but both of us trusting in god to get us through um, everyone has those experiences of loss and uh, but of course i can relate to feeling like i need that person in god to uh, to draw from and have strength from and sometimes as jonathan just mentioned sometimes god can work through another person to help us and to sit there and just to hold our hand be present to journey alongside of us and help god carry us through to the other side we have a lot of families as i just mentioned that are going through that kind of a time right now and that's when the experience of those of us that have, have felt those times before, just even sitting with the person can be helpful so you understand some of what the person's going through. And it can be such a blessing. Jesus, when he came to earth, understood so much of us already. And by the time he launched into the full-time ministry we read about in the Bible, he was already a 30-year-old man. And 30 back then is more like 40 or 45 now. Life expectancy wasn't quite as long back then. 
So he was already pretty seasoned and had lived through quite a bit of life by the time he was out there performing the miracles, teaching, healing, praying. The love that he displayed, that we read about, that today we feel, we sense, we can even touch the life that's inside of someone else that has Christ in them. It is amazing. It's wonderful. And as we move towards this, this last song that Jonathan has chosen, in fact, I wasn't even so sure about it for the service, but now I see how this particular piece connects in very well. It's a song we often sing during Holy Week, for either Maundy Thursday and or Good Friday called What Wondrous Love Is This? But I want you to listen to this hymn and particularly the lyrics in the theme of trusting in God. Let's hear what this hymn has to offer. I'm going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of What Wondrous Love Is This? And um, it is listed as a USA folk him. And of course, we can all imagine that it probably emanates from some other, most likely European countries or country. Um, and whenever you see in your Methodist hymnal anything that says folk hymn, obviously it's just referring to the fact that there is no composer per se, that it's been passed down from generation to generation. The lyrics no less powerful for having not had an author whose name we can recite. <clears throat> what wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for I'll sing on. We think of eternity as something that starts after death. 
Eternity is already happening. It's happening for you. It's happening for me. God is eternal. We are here for a period of time on earth, like Jesus was in fully human form. But our souls are also eternal. Our souls long to sing on. So let us make a commitment here and now that our souls, our lives, will be a song in trust and offering to God. Just like Jesus placed his whole trust, his whole life, in his Father's hands, let us work to strive to do exactly that. To trust, and when we feel like we're getting weighed down, to reach out and say, hey, I need a little help. Can you pray with me? And let's turn our focus to God. When you do that together with someone, wow. Go in peace and in love and in trust that God has got you now and every day for all of eternity. Amen.